Hi everyone, this is GKCS. In this video, we'll talk about the most popular AWS services that you should know as a backend or even frontend engineer. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because if your organization uses any cloud solution provider, you'll be able to relate to this video. And if you're thinking of starting up, then this video should be very relevant to you because many of the services that I'm talking about will solve problems that you're looking to uh, take care of on the tech side. So by the end of this video, hopefully you'll not have to reinvent the wheel and you'll also know how these services work internally by just going through the links in the description. All the best, let's start. Number 20, Neptune. Neptune is a version of Neo4j that is managed by AWS. Uh, and the benefit of this is, apart from it being open source, you have Neo4j having clear APIs, well-documented APIs. AWS manages the deployment of Neo4j. You can scale easily. You can set up alerts, alarms. You can monitor performance. You can easily take care of hardware faults. Software upgrades are taken care of. Everything which is standard in a cloud solution provider is wrapped around Neo4j and provided to you. The reason I'm putting it at number 20 is because it's probably the least likely thing that you're going to be ending up using unless you have a need for a graph database, unless you have some sort of social network or location-based application. You don't really need to look into it. You just need to be aware that AWS has a solution. Number 19, Cognito. Cognito is AWS's authentication mechanism. Authentication basically means that is this person who they claim to be. So there are many ways to do this. One is single sign-on, SSO. There is OAuth, which is extremely popular. There's JWT-based authentication. This is, again, very popular. But as an engineer, you probably don't want to get into this. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. You can use AWS Cognito to make sure that authentication happens seamlessly and is entirely managed, again, by AWS, making sure that the scale and the right security mechanisms are being used. Number 18, TimeStream. TimeStream is a time series database offered by AWS. I'm not sure exactly what they're using underneath. Is it infrastructure? DB, is it open TSDB or is it their own database? Having said that, it doesn't really matter much. You can fire queries on this database to slice data across time. Common problems with the time series database is you need to get aggregated metrics. You need to be able to get the recent metrics quickly. Uh, and so time stream is a wrapper around all of these complexities provided by AWS, along with, of course, all the cloud solution provider benefits that you have. It can auto scale. It has software upgrades, everything. Number 17, open search. Open search is a text search solution provided by AWS. It uses Elasticsearch underneath. Elasticsearch, as you know, scales really well. It's got some amazing algorithms to find a substring or a text which probably exists in some other document. So if you're writing any kind of a search engine, it makes sense to have Elasticsearch. If you're also trying to find, let's say, common comments or discussions that you want to bring up in your search, Elasticsearch is a good option. AWS makes a wrapper around it, charges a lot of money. <laughs> but, you know, open search is something that may make sense if you are a search first application. If not, there are ways to write simple queries and try to index things in a relational database also but if you have decided to go ahead with Elasticsearch then open search is a pretty good option. Number 16, Lambda. Lambda is a way of saying serverless in AWS. Uh, serverless for those of you who don't know is Basically, you have servers which you don't know about. Your code runs on a server. That server is being managed by AWS. If you write serverless functions, the idea is that if an incoming request comes to AWS, they're going to take your code, bring an instance which can run that code, accept this request, process it, and give a response. All of this seamlessly. It might look like magic, like, okay, you have an incoming request, and in real time, you bring in some compute power to answer the request. At the scale of AWS, this is roughly possible. Also, of course, there are many optimizations around this. You might have a very small instance running requests and as in the number of uh, requests increase, you can scale this easily. So auto scaling is perfect when you have Lambda. The only drawback though is that Lambda tends to be a little more expensive than taking an EC2 instance with reservation. So it's not an on-demand instance. You have a EC2 instance that you have taken for six months or 12 months. So you pay accordingly, but the cost of an EC2 instance is much cheaper than a Lambda. Having said that, if you're a startup and you want to quickly grow, then Lambda makes sense because you really don't know how much the scale is going to be initially. So Lambda can take care of the scaling problems and also the uncertainty problems while you focus on the business problems. Number 15, Kinesis. Kinesis is something which is very commonly used in medium to even small organizations where data exists, right? Uh, if you have users performing certain actions, those actions can be mapped conceptually into events. So a user clicked on this button, make an event out of it and send it to a stream. You can think of a conceptual wrapper around it. You can think of a stream of events that are being sent to this place, that is Kinesis. The destination of these events will be some sort of data store. So that is usually a file store system, which is S3. And then you can run analytics on top of these events. So how many users have clicked on this button in the last seven days and are from India? This is a pretty expensive query. You probably don't want to hit your 
main database with this so instead you have these events that are being streamed into a file store and then you want to run analytics on top of it number 14 glacier aws glacier is a solution for people who store a lot of data sometimes you store data for auditory purposes making sure that you know you don't miss anything but you're never going to read this data i mean even if you read the data having a 24 hour latency is fine so for example if you have any compliance issues the police comes to you and says that i want all financial transactions of this person so it's okay if you can respond in 12 to 24 hours now this kind of data is not beneficial to the bank it's just being stored for compliance reasons it makes sense to store it in cold storage places which are going to be readily accessed very cheap hard drives as long as the data is guaranteed to be durable and so glacier is extremely popular when it comes to storing less frequently used data another use case is when you have a high quality high definition video let's say you are live streaming a cricket match and so you are getting 8k footage but maybe nobody in the world is watching 8k video even if you can have the 8k video seen on tv you don't want to give them the 8k video because it's going to cost a lot when it comes to uh, bandwidth requirements in these cases you want the original footage somewhere just in case but at the same time you want transformations in different resolutions and formats of this video being served to users so the original footage is then stored in glacier and the copies are stored in s3 or even kept in a video cache and so glacier is a popular solution for storing data that will be less frequently accessed number 13 simple queue service sqs or simple queue service is basically a queue service if you have worked with message queues, then SQS is probably what you want to go for. It provides functionalities of pushing to a queue and pulling from a queue. Very useful if you want to have a set of publishers and a set of subscribers. If you're going for an event-driven architecture, again, the benefit of SQS is serious because it's a reasonably cheap solution and it scales very well. At this point in time, if you're using Apache Kafka to manage your event streaming, SQS may be a alternative that you can go for. Kafka has many features built on top of it and it has certain benefits. I would say the documentation around Kafka is also pretty strong but as a startup you don't really need those many features so uh, you can go for SQS. Number 12, Data Migration Service. DMS or Data Migration Service is surprisingly useful because in the life cycle of an organization it's inevitable. You have to migrate your data from one place to another and this is probably the scariest kind of operation that you can pick up because uh, as an engineer if you screw this up, not only can you have your customers feel upset because they are not able to access your website, but you can actually lose data, which is terrifying. It's not just losing customer data, which is a problem, but you might put your whole system in an inconsistent state. So managing this is a challenge and doing this manually is firstly prone to error and secondly very tedious. So DMS is a solution that AWS offers to move data from one place to another seamlessly. And if you're a medium to large organization, it makes a lot of sense for you to just utilize this solution which is given off the shelf. If you're a startup, maybe you will not be able to avail this solution frankly because DMS is uh, available for large Aurora instances and we at Indivirity could not use it but if it ever comes up, it's going to be a very good day. <laughs> Number 11, DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a very famous solution by AWS, but I don't know how popular it is amongst small companies. So I'm putting it at number 11. The basic idea is it's a database, which is a NoSQL database. It can scale enormously well. There are some other benefits also. You can actually have multiple indexes in this database. So one is a partition key, which helps you understand how you're sharding your data. And another is a sort key, which helps you order records in a partition of Amazon. If you don't know these terms, check out the links in the description. Sharding is well explained uh, on this channel and so is indexing. And so if you need a NoSQL database, it makes sense to just use what AWS already offers you. Cassandra is, let's say, heavily inspired by Amazon DynamoDB, which is fine, right? There's an open source solution out there. Uh, and then there's a closed source solution, which is built by Amazon. The thing which might worry you a bit is cost. In fact, AWS also asks you proactively to go for a SQL database instead of NoSQL database if you're a startup and even a kind of a mid-sized organization. So that's the reason why this is at number 11. Otherwise, it's an amazing solution for large organizations. Number 10, Elastic Cache. Elastic Cache is a super easy to understand solution. It's a very common solution also. You just need a cache. So why would you write your own cache? Just use AWS's cache. It is compatible with Redis. It's compatible with Memcache, two most popular cache implementations out there in the world. And the benefit of this is it's fast, it's scalable, everything standard with a cloud solution provider. Only drawback that I would see is sometimes if you're looking for an in-memory cache and you want very high control or you want your own custom algorithm, maybe you just want to write the cache yourself. That's what we're doing at Interview ID also, uh, the startup that I'm working in. But if I need a global cache, there was no way that I would deploy my own or you know go for a third-party solution. I would just use Elastic Cache. Number nine, simple email service. 
Simple email service uh, has a sister which is called simple notification service. Both of these are extremely similar. They let you connect with customers with endpoints through AWS's APIs. And if you're doing any kind of marketing or you're sending an OTP to people through email, SES is probably the cheapest solution you can get. You can host your own solution also. There are open source solutions which do that. But again, the problem that I see with this is that you need your own DevOps. You need your own optimizations. SES is entirely managed, scales really well. We use it for our marketing campaigns. We use it for the OTPs that we send to verify email addresses. And even if you send it like 50,000 emails together, SES is smart enough to scale quickly, but also patches them internally so that your request passes up to SES and then it manages sending those emails. I also mentioned SNS, which is simple notification service. Uh, the idea here is very similar. Uh, it sends SMSs to people. If you want to send marketing SMSs, then I think you need permission from someplace. But if you're sending transaction SMSs like OTP, it's very easy to do. Number eight, Elastic Load Balancer. ELB or Elastic Load Balancer is a very common, popular solution by AWS heavily tested, is really easy to set up. The basic idea is you need some sort of a load balancer in your system as long as you have more than one server. And so even if you don't have a server and you want to just be sure tomorrow, you want to build a cluster of just one and have elastic load balancer pointing to that cluster head, it's usually a good idea because you can scale quickly. The load balancer's basic job is to take incoming requests and decide where to send these requests. Elastic load balancer is probably the solution you want to go for. Please do not build your own load balancer. If you're using something like Nginx, then that's great. You can go ahead and continue using it. but if you already have ELB, then most of the problems are already solved here. Number seven, CloudWatch. CloudWatch is a complete solution by AWS when it comes to monitoring and logging. So if you have certain services which are running in AWS, you don't have to set up monitoring by yourself. CloudWatch is already doing that for you automatically. So when you take an EC2 instance, it's not like you have to tell that, please track the amount of memory that I'm consuming or please track the number of IO operations I'm making. It's amazing, CloudWatch automatically tracks that and logs it. The other thing that you can do is set up alarms in CloudWatch. So if you have a problem, if a server goes down or something, you can get a notification on a channel like Slack and you can just go and quickly restart that instance. The other thing that CloudWatch offers is logging. This is very common for engineers to debug or trace problems. If you're running multiple servers, it makes a lot of sense to have a centralized place which takes all these logs. CloudWatch provides that. But even if you're running a single server, it's very easy to just integrate your log, wherever you are persisting logs, that log file, to a CloudWatch stream. And then you can comfortably watch it without having to SSH into a box. You can just go to AWS and look at all the logs in one place. Number six, API Gateway. API Gateway is a solution that we have already talked about in one of the videos before. You can check the link in the description. The benefit of this is that you can expose all of your applications APIs in one place manage all the versioning and scaling automatically. So it's a very commonly used solution and that's why it's at number six. It's pretty high up there. Number five, Route 53. Route 53 is the DNS solution provided by AWS. This is absolutely essential if you have a startup which is using EC2 instances and maybe a UI which is deployed through AWS S3. Without Route 53, you don't know what IP address you have to hit when you hit integrate.io. So if you purchase a domain name, let's say xyz.com, that domain name has to map to an IP address, a public IP address that people can hit to. Now, this IP address happens to be an instance of AWS because you have taken the solution from there. The mapping can be done by you manually, but it's much easier to just offload this again to AWS and say that in case you change things behind the scenes, automatically my users should be pointed to that IP address through domain name servers. And that is managed entirely by Route 53 from AWS. Number four, CloudFront. CloudFront is a CDN solution provided by AWS. The basic idea is these are geo-distributed caches. So if your users are split in India and US and you serve movies to them, the movies which are popular in India may not be popular in US. In fact, the movies which are popular, let's say in Maharashtra may not be popular in Telangana. So you have different regions inside a country and what you really want to do is you want to take data which is relevant to those regions and move it as close as possible to the region itself. That is a content delivery network. Yeah, you have distributed the data according to their relevance. What you don't want to do is you don't want to build this yourself. Of course, that makes no sense. But even a third party solution like Akamai, although it is great, has certain setup challenges that you have. So instead, CloudFront is extremely easy to set up. Uh, all you have to do is you have to use the file store S3, set up the files and the entire bucket, which is like a folder in S3, can be picked up and moved all around the world through this CDN solution. Number three, RDS. RDS or Relational Database Service 
is basically database service. If you have some sort of SQL data that you want to store or something that you understand quite well, where you can run SQL queries easily, then you are looking for RDS. It's compatible with Postgres and MySQL. When I say compatible means that you can run MySQL and Postgres and internally whatever data structures that they are using can be used by Postgres. So you as an end user only care about persisting and retrieving data. You don't care about which instance is storing it and stuff like that. On top of this, there are multiple options that you have when setting up RDS. You can do this over elastic block storage. You can use Aurora, which is more like a design pattern of databases. You have high availability and high durability because you're using multiple instances when you're using Aurora. It's a bit more expensive because you know you have six copies of the data distributed around the world, but it is worth it if you care about your data <laughs> in a serious way. Uh, so we currently use Aurora at Interview Ready and we have found it to be totally seamless. There's never been a problem with persisting data or making sure that it's available. Number two, S3. Simple storage service or S3, which is the more popular term, is like a file store. Internally, you don't know what it uses because it doesn't really matter. All you care about as an end user is that if you store files or any kind of data in S3, it stays there. Right? It's highly durable. And the other benefit about S3 is it's extremely cheap. Not as cheap as Glacier, which is a variant of S3, but it's so cheap that it makes sense for you to take all of your analytics records and just persist it over there. If there are certain logs that you want to persist, persist it in S3. This video you want to persist, persist it in S3. S3 is extraordinarily cheap, very reliable, scales almost infinitely. You probably use it currently or a similar sister solution from GCP or Azure. Number one, EC2. EC2 is the backbone of AWS. It basically is a server service. If you want to run your code, you have to run it somewhere. So a server is the kind of place that you run your code in. And then you need file storage over there. So you need a place to store your code. You need an operating system, which is hopefully already installed. So EC2 is the building block, a server in your architecture. EC2 has many variations also inside it. This is primarily because different companies have different kinds of use cases. So AWS wants to provide you as much options as you possibly can have and also confuse you along the way maybe. There's general purpose instances, which is probably what you want to do as a startup. You don't want to you know, make too many guesses, but there's also memory optimized instances and there's compute optimized instances. So if you need a lot of memory in the instance that you're running, this is possible if you have a lot of static data, right? You want to cache everything, then you want to go for a EC2 instance, which is memory optimized. And if you have a lot of computation that's happening, so you have maybe not that much memory that you need, but you're performing some computations which are massaging the results and giving responses, then you can go for a compute optimized instance. Again, just to be sure, unless you are absolutely certain that the data that you are dealing with is of a particular type, a general instance is what you want to go for. As a startup, you might also go for a Lambda solution, a serverless solution. Like I said, EC2 has many benefits, but those benefits also exist in Lambda. And the major benefit of Lambda is you don't over engineer or you don't over provision or under provision. Lambda auto scales very easily. You can also apply auto scaling to EC2, but then the cost differential is very low between Lambda and EC2. So these are some of the services that AWS provides that you should know as a software engineer. The benefit of these is quite obvious. They are managed entirely. You can focus more on engineering or business problems instead of DevOps and hardware requirements in an organization. Even large companies like Netflix and Razorpay use AWS behind the scenes to make sure that they don't have to worry about everything under the sun when they're running their businesses. For small and medium organizations, it almost makes no sense to go ahead and have your own managed instance. I know that Zerodha is a exception to this, but Zerodha has an extremely strong technical team and the choices that they have made may not be aligned with what you believe or what you're doing currently in general. The best idea seems to be to offload the problems that you're currently facing in terms of tech to AWS or GCP or Azure. The most popular solution out there is AWS. And so that's the one I'll recommend. So thank you so much for watching. This is all I have for AWS services. Many of these services can immediately be integrated in your organization very quickly. AWS is very well managed, scales very well, has perfect software upgrades, has a lot of benefits because you can also you know, monitor your services automatically. And if you ask me, there are very rare cases where you need to manage your own instances in this day and age, instead of just offloading all that problem to cloud solution providers like Amazon Web Services. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want, notifications for further videos like this, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time.